and welcome to DC lesson number one exercise tutorial it's Dr Ken here with you so how does the video operate step one the exercise question is posed you as a student pauses the video and attempts the question step two continue to play the video a hint is provided if a little further assistance is required and again then pause the video and complete the exercise. Step three, continue to play the video. The answer is provided with a worked explanation. And then finally, continue the video to the next question. So our first question is question one. A current of two amps is maintained through a circuit for one hour. Determine the quantity of electricity in coulombs. So you pause here. So now continuing, um, our hint is uh, list the data that you have available. We know we have a current of two amps and a time of one hour, which is 3,600 seconds. Remember we work in SI units. So determine the appropriate equation that actually represents the physics, that is charge of electricity over time and that formula is Q equals I times T. So pause here if you need to. So now let's answer the question. So the answer simply was, I'll just turn on my pen. So our formula, if you didn't get it from the hint, was Q equals I times T. So we have our two amps multiplied by 3,600, giving us an answer of 7,200 C, or you could also use the whole word, word coulombs. Question two. A cell provides a current of 4 amps to a circuit for 50 minutes. Determine the quantity of electricity in coulombs delivered from the cell. So similar to the first question. So pause here and have a go. So now let's give you a hint. Determine the appropriate equation, again that represents the physics. And remember we're working in SI units. So that's amps and seconds for this particular thing. So pause here if you need to. So now let's quickly continue. So here's the answer again, but this time we had to actually work out how many seconds there were in the amount of time. So if you remember, we had 50 minutes. So if we take 50 minutes and divide it by 60, that gives us the proportion of time or the ratio of time. So if we get that ratio and multiply it by 3,600, which was the amount of time for an hour, tells us there's about 3,000 seconds required. So Q equals four times 3,000, giving us an answer of 12,000 Coulombs. Question three. A chemical plating bath requires 20,000 coulombs of electricity. Determine the value of the current. So pause here and have a go at this one. So here's our hint. Determine the equation and you're going to have to transpose it for current. So pause again here if you need to. And now let's move on to the answer. So the answer is Q equals I multiplied by T. So we transpose the equation by dividing both sides by time. Gives us the final equation of This one here, 
I equals Q divided by T. So we take our 20,000. We divide it by 3,600 because we were running for one hour and there are 3,600 seconds. So that works out that we would need to provide 5.56 amps for that one hour to produce our 20,000 Coulomb. So question four now, how long will it take 15 amps to supply 1,500 Coulomb? So very similar question, we're just gonna be transposing for a different value. So again, have a go at this and pause. Here's our hint. Select again the equation that represents the physics. And this time we've got to transpose for time rather than transposing for current. So here's our answer. This time if we divide both sides of the equation by current, so we put current on both sides of the equation, we will end up with T equals Q on I. So our Q is 1500 divided by 15 comes to 100 seconds. So we're going to need 100 seconds of time for our 15 amps to create our 1500 coulomb. Question five, produce a block diagram that represents electricity generation, transmission and distribution. So pause the video here and do yourself a block diagram. Just keep it very, very simple, very, very linear. So here's our hint. Determine some sum, simple symbols, I should say. Say a circle for a generator, a square for a transformer, and a simple line to indicate cables between these things. So here's our answer, the way I've done it. I've kind of written it out in text, a generator to a transformer, some wire, substation, and a transformer, some more wire, zone substation, transformer, some more wire, transformer out in the field, then some more wire, and then the actual user. So that turns into the diagram. It's just uh, directly below here. So here's my generator. And I've got a transformer that steps the voltage up to from 15 kV up to about 330 kV, and that's called transmission. And then when we want to transmit uh, shorter distances, we often drop our 330 kV down to uh, 132 kV, but it's still called transmission at that stage. Then we get to our zone substations. That's this one here. So here's our zone substations, they're called. Where they take the 132 kV, they often break it down to 11, um, sometimes 22, and sometimes 33. It doesn't matter what you put in there, as long as you've got some idea. And then that's distributed around the streets of a town or a city, normally at 11 kV. And then you've got pole mount transformers and kiosk transformers that then reduce the voltage back down to 400 and 240 volts, which in turn is provided to our final customer. And those last two steps is called distribution. Question six. What is the value of the meter reading at positions A, B, C, and D? So have a think about that and pause the video. Here's our hint. So what does the meter measure? What units is it measuring? Determine the full scale deflection, the FSD. Determine the value of each of the main divisions and then determine the value of the minor divisions, and then you can use those to determine what positions A, B, C, and D represent. So pause here if you need to, and adjust your answers if required. Now, 
Now for the answer, our full scale deflection was 20 volts. We had one volt per main division and 0.5 of a volt per minor division. So first we're going to look at A. Here's position A and it's at 8.4. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can see it's just a little bit of a fraction past the eight. And I reckon it was about 8.4. Look, if you put 8.3 or 8.2 or even 8.5, yeah, close enough. B, you can see here, here's 15 volts. It's one volt full division past it, but it's only a fraction past it. So I said about 15.1 for position B. Position C, right up the top end of the scale here, not quite quite 20 volts, just a little bit under it. I said, oh, it's not a bit more than half, so I went with that 19.6. If you went with 19.5 or 19.7, it doesn't matter. And then finally, position D, it was one, two, three divisions up and almost into the fourth division, but not quite, I reckon about 3.9 for that one there. Question seven. Again, what is the value of the meter readings at each of the positions A, B, C and D? Again, pause the video and have a go at those four readings. Here's the hint, same as the last hint. What does the meter measure? What's it measuring in? Determine the full scale deflection, the FSD. Determine the value of each of the main divisions and each of the minor divisions. So pause here if you need to. And here's our answer. So five amps, full scale deflection, it's an ammeter, so we're measuring in amps. Major divisions, one amp for every major division. Minor divisions, where it's every half an hour amp. And then we had minor, minor divisions. So we had minor divisions here. I'll just color in the, uh, the minor divisions there. That's every half an amp. You can see them in there. And then of course we had minor minor divisions. So we had another set of even smaller divisions inside those. So position A, obviously it's a bit over two amps and it's under two and a half and I reckon three. So about 2.3. B, there was one, two, three, four, nearly five. I estimated at 4.7 um, or so close. To, no, in actual fact, I reckon it was so close to half, right on the half, I went with 0.5 of an amp or half an amp. If you went 4.9, it's okay. Or if you went 0.6, that's okay as well. C. Right up over here, four, 4.5, six, seven, maybe, I reckon 4.7, might have been point, 4.75, but somewhere around about 4.7 if you got that close enough. And then finally, D was around 3.2, only two divisions inside here. So I went with 3.2. Question eight, convert the values in the table in engineering multiples and sub multiples. So on the left hand side, we've got the values and we're going in ohms to mega ohms, ohms to micro ohms, volts to kilovolts, so on and so forth down the table. 
filling out the center of the table. So again, pause the video here and have a go at converting those values. Here's the hint. Remember we're working in engineering units, so kilos are times 10 to the three, megas are times 10 to the six, millis are times 10 to the minus three, and micros are times 10 to the minus six. So you've got to determine, oh, am I moving the decimal point? Three or six points to the left or the right. So remember engineering units, we're always working in groups of threes. And question eight's answer, we've got 1.2 mega ohms, then 1.6 micro ohms, 33 kV or kilovolts, then 4.28 milliamps and 800 millivolts. And then finally, 70 micro amps is the correct answer. So it was just a matter of moving the decimal point with engineering notation to get it into the right value. So that's Dr. Ken signing off for um, exercise for lesson number one. Hope you enjoyed that.